Hello everyone, this is Jeff Twardowski with UB Successful. In this video, I will be showing you how to create an ID vault in your HCL Domino environment to store your user's ID files. If you are already using the Notes ID vault in your environment, please let us know in the comments below. We make a few assumptions about your environment. You are the Domino administrator for your environment and have both the HCL notes and administrator client on your machine. You also have access to the organizational certifiers for your environment. If you have any ideas for future videos, please let us know in the comments below. One of the most important things in a Domino environment is securing the user IDs. Once the ID has been compromised, they can be used to wreak havoc on a Domino environment. Depending upon the security level of the user ID, it can be used to delete information, send in appropriate or malicious emails, execute domino administrator functions that can shut down the server, access sensitive data, or corrupt the environment. One of the tools we use to help combat this situation is the Notes ID Vault. So what are some of the benefits we get by using the Notes ID Vault? We can recover lost or deleted ID files. We can synchronize the ID files across multiple machines. We can even assign personnel outside of the Domino administrators to issue password resets. This last one by far is the most beneficial because we can allow the help desk or security team to reset the notes passwords without giving them access to the individual ID files. Let's start up the Domino Administrator client. Make sure we're on our administrative server. In this case, it's Demo Dom 1. Select the Configuration tab. Go over to our Tools. Down near the bottom, we have ID Vaults. Open it up and click the Create button. Here are the steps that the wizard will take us through to create the ID Vault. Name of the ID Vault. Identify the Vault Server Administrators. Create a Vault User ID for encrypting the ID files. Identify who is allowed to reset passwords. Create a policy as a model to automate the addition of user IDs into the Vault. While you can prevent the screen from displaying, administrators seldom create ID Vaults, so it would be best to review it every time. Select Next. What do we want to name our vault? You can call the vault anything you want with a few exceptions. The vault name cannot match any of the organizational or organizational unit certifiers. In addition, once the vault name has been selected, it cannot be changed. So pick a good one. Many environments I see call the vault ID vault so it's easy to find. We will do the same. The vault description can be changed later if needed. Select Next. What password do we want on the ID Vault ID file? Because this is a training class, I'm going to pick one that matches our previous passwords. I recommend that you pick a complex password and save both the password and the ID in a secured location. Select Next. Which server do you want to place the vault? The ID vault can go in any server in the environment. I recommend placing it on the mail server. Network administrators change access control lists and firewalls to allow users to access their mail. It makes sense that the vault is on the same server. Typically, we would have a list of all the servers in our environment. Because we only have one, we will select it. Select Change. Go look it up. Say OK. Then select a new server. Select Next. Who is going to be the administrator of your ID vault? Select Add and Remove. Admin is our Domino administrator. In the future, we will add others, but until then, we only have the one name. The catch on this screen is that the administrators cannot be a group, 
it has to be actual users. Try to keep at least two administrators on the list in case someone leaves the company. Select OK. Select Next. What organizational certifiers do we want in this vault? Since the demo is for a small organization with one group of admins and one help desk, we will add all the certifiers. Select Add and Remove. Select the available organizations and select the Add button. Select OK. We have all the organizations added. Select Next. Who is allowed to reset passwords? Let's look at our list. Here we can use users, groups, or even organizational units to reset passwords. While we can use any combination of the above, my recommendation is to create a group specifically for this function and add other users and groups. This makes just one place we have to look to manage this function. I don't have a bunch of groups in the demo system, so let's pick the local domain admins. We can add the group to just one of the organizations by selecting Add, or we can add the group to all the organizations by selecting Add to All. This is important to larger organizations that have multiple help desk and domino administrator groups, so each group can focus on a select set of users. In our environment, the certifier for the O in the server will be controlled by the local domain admins, and the users will get assistance from the help desk or a security group. I would add your domino administrators to all just in case. Select Next. I like creating a new policy to be assigned to a specific person or group. Why, you may ask? Do any of us know what details need to be put into the policy? Since this is our first time, let the system create a policy and settings for us. Select Next. Who do we want the policy assigned to? Select Add or Remove. Let's start by adding ourselves. In this demo class, I am the admin at the top. You can select your username. Select Add. Select OK. Select Next. Add a message for the users that forgot their password. Don't be overly concerned about the message. I will show you later how to change the message. Select OK. This screen gives us one last chance to make sure everything is correct. The most important is the vault name because it cannot be changed. Select Create Vault. Remember the certifier we selected during the wizard process? This is our first one. Select Browse. Find the certifier ID. I moved my certifier IDs to the document directory. You may find yours on a file share that all the administrators have access to. I typically rename my certifiers to make them easier to identify. You may find your certifiers labeled cert.id and ousert.id. Select OU Server Cert.id. Select Open. Select OK. Enter the password. Select OK. Remember, in your environment, you will perform this process for every certifier you selected in the ID Vault wizard. Here are all the details about the vault. Select copy to clipboard. Open an application like Notepad. Paste the details so you can review them later or place them in your administrator documentation database. Select done. That's all there is to setting up the ID vault. Our next step is getting the user IDs into the vault. 
Let's look at the policies and settings. Select ID Vault Vault Settings. Yes, I said that correctly. What's nice about this setting document, it already takes care of the details for us. We can now set things the way we want. Again, this is just the default. So what's important on this ID Vault setting tab? Here's the name of the ID Vault. For most of us, we will only have the one. There's the message we share with users who forgot their passwords. We can customize it as needed. For example, your organization changes your phone service and the phone number to the help desk changes. We can make the change here. Enforce password change after password has been reset is set to yes. During a password reset, the help desk will provide a new password. This setting forces the user to reset their password to something different. I recommend leaving this setting to yes. Some applications can use the ID Vault. This setting allows applications such as SameTime, Quicker, and iNotes to use the ID Vault. One feature about the ID Vault that I like is automatic ID download. This feature comes in handy if you ever have a user whose ID has expired. In the past, we had to get the ID off their desktop, recertify the ID, then get it back to the user's desktop. If the user was local, a thumb drive would do the trick, but remote users were a challenge. Now we can recertify the ID in the vault, then have the user log in again and it will download the correct ID to their workstation. They're good to go. So leave this setting to yes. Finish by selecting save and close. Now what we need to make sure is the policy is assigned to appropriate users. I'm not a big fan of this screen. Go to names.nsf Scroll down to Policies. Double click on the ID Vault Vault Policy. This is an explicit policy. Under Policy Assignment, we can see the user we assigned to the policy. In this demo, it was me as admin. We can select users or groups in the Domino domain to be assigned to this policy by selecting the little triangle in the lower right hand corner. In the selected names dialog box, we can select any user or group to be assigned to this policy. We can add another policy by clicking Add Policy. The first policy was explicit. Here we can make an organizational based policy. Change from explicit to organizational. In the policy name, change it to users forward slash UBS. Go to your security and click the little triangle. Select the ID Vault settings. In our case, we only have the one setting, though other systems could have several depending upon the environmental requirements. Select Save and Close. With an organizational policy for users slash UBS, we can add new users to the system and they will inherit this policy automatically, thus adding the user IDs to the vault. A quick peek at the ID vault, it is located in the IBM ID vault directory. Not sure why this hasn't changed yet to become HCL since this is version 11. Once the ID vault is created, it will not move. Notice I already have one ID in the vault. What's nice about it is you don't see the IDs. I can save the user IDs of individuals that are no longer active in the company. Just in case they ever come back, we can give them the same ID. 
you want to see the ID Vault in action, I will put a link to registering users with a text file video in the description below. It adds users' IDs to the Vault during registration. If you have any ideas for future videos, please share them in the comments below.